to part five of this life renovation course, uh, Stress Busters. Uh, we've been looking at this idea of tension, the tension that exists between pressure and stress and uh, how do we uh, deal with that tension because it's not a problem that needs to be solved, it's a tension that needs to be managed and it's very important to have that level of understanding and uh, uh, we've been looking at various elements of this and we've over the last couple of sessions we've looked at uh, how to understand uh, the responses that lead from pressure to stress you know what are the responses to life issues that we have that can take pressure and turn it into stress so we looked at our response to reacting to frustrations and uh, how that can uh, you know turn that pressure into stress and of course our response to the weariness of worry and how worry can have this effect on us it slowly just brings out the worst in us and uh, but today's session is not about either of those two things today's session we're going to be look, looking at uh, learning techniques for alleviating the pressure and I'm going to let you into some some uh, real trade secrets here, stuff I've been teaching leaders for many, many, many years uh, that help them continually be under pressure but not stressed out. Because uh, the truth is everyone has a breaking point and at some point, uh, you know, we, we can snap. Uh, one of my favourite movies uh, is a movie called Anger Management with, uh, where Jack Nicholson plays Dr. Buddy Rydell and uh, he makes all these one-line statements in this uh, in this movie, and one of them is "temper is the only thing you can't get rid of by losing it," and I've always liked that uh, that thought. Uh, and he comes up with these uh, wacky ways of dealing with uh, with uh, the emotion of anger, and he talks about this idea of "goose fraba." And that we, everyone has to have a goose for a bar. Well, essentially, that's really what we're talking about today is uh, uh, um, uh, the different areas in which we need uh, to have that kind of uh, have these outlets that will stop the pressure from exploding and building up and turning into stress. Because, you know, the truth is, we all have. Uh, we all experience and have uh, different types of external pressures. There's work deadlines, family commitments, financial burdens, the, the general busyness of life. It can all heat up and uh, it can, you know, that, that tension can all of a sudden just poof before you know it. And uh, they can ca cause internal pressure, building up. And then before we know it, we've got unsustainable anxiety, unrelenting worry, and then chronic stress. Uh, kicks in. Well, I'm going to give you, as I said, some trade secrets today uh, and how I've helped many leaders over the years uh, release that pressure. And I believe it's like being in a pressure cooker, that, uh, that if we don't release pressure, that you know, the, the top will blow off that thing. I, w I was a chef for many years and, and uh, you know, if you don't allow some pressure out of a pressure cooker, pfft, you know, that thing will blow. And, It'll explode. And so I'm going to give what, uh, what I've been teaching for many years are four uh, pressure valves. And these four pressure valves will really, really help uh, us in our understanding of like how to release that pressure before it turns into stress. Well, the first valve uh, that we need to um, understand is the physical valve. Uh, I... I honestly believe God may have created us, but he leaves the maintenance up to us. So it's our choice how we choose to treat our body. Uh, Paul, who was, uh, for, you know, underwent extreme pressure. I mean, when he writes about his life and the pressures he went through and how he was within, uh, you know, just being beaten to death at so many times and, and in so many shipwrecks and in danger ev from every corner, every, uh, you know, all the people he's meant to trust and all the people who betrayed him and, uh, you know, this ongoing thing of pressure uh, being around his life the whole time. He says, 
He makes statements like, you know, honour God with your body. And he writes to his protege, to Timothy, his young leader, this up-and-coming leader. And the first letter he writes to him as he's mentoring this young leader, he says, physical exercise has value. Uh, why get physical? Well, it's really important to look after our physical well-being. Why? Because you'll feel better. Uh, you will look better. You live longer. You think sharper. And you increase your productivity. When we exercise, we just seem to feel fantastic. It releases endorphins, it does things for us, it flushes out the arteries, it lubricates the joints, it increases oxygen to the brain. Uh, there's so many things that help us when we talk about getting that pressure and making sure it doesn't turn into stress. The physical valve is a major, major valve in helping us work that through. Well, we're going to take it from thought to action if we're going to take the physical valve from thought, from just an idea to action. We've got to understand intention is in compliance. Many people intend to, to exercise. Many people intend to look after their body, but then don't. We don't eat the right foods. We don't do the right things and look after our bodies. Well, if we're just going to talk about exercise, because I think exercise is a key thing here that we're talking about. It's really getting out there and there's something about exercising that just does things in us and, and helps us to cope. Well, I, you know, I say this to leaders, look, you might say, oh, I don't have time to exercise. Well, I say, look, just give me 1% of your life, just 1%. There, there's 168 hours in every week and 1% of your life represents 1.68 hours or around 100 minutes of your life. That's, that's, you know, 1% is like four days at 25 minutes or five days at 20 minutes a day. And that's all we need. If we can just get that in to our lives. And uh, I mean, these days they talk a lot more about things like modality and making sure we're not sitting for too long and that we work standing and uh, move around a bit and don't just stay in one position. And, and uh, I've learned uh, a lot as, you know, I've grown and uh, to make sure I'm including all these sorts of things, walking, going for a walk around the place. And uh, we're currently in quite a large venue, so I, I just walk around the venue a few times and, the, and that just gets the blood pumping and the arteries going and just enough to, so I'm not just sitting. It's really important to just look after the body. 1% of our life, just 1% can do amazing things. And, and add to that things like modality where we just, we learn to stand, we learn to go for a walk, we learn not to just stay in the same position and all these things add to that pressure valve being released and not allowing that pressure to turn into stress. So the first one is the physical valve, really important. Second valve that we've got to have in our lives if we're going to stop the pressure from turning into stress, we're going to release that pressure in our lives is the psychological valve. And this valve is imperative as stress is a core trigger of mental health issues. Um, uh, um, Solomon, who was a very, very well-known king in his time and probably one of the most successful kings that we know of, um, he went on this uh, this kind of uh, he went through this period where he goes through this kind of social experiment and and he writes well what does a man get for all the toil and anxious striving with which he labours all his days his work is pain and grief even at night his mind does not rest and uh, he he had some pretty you know he he learned that you know you can go through life and just toil and and just anxious striving with all the labors and all the work and, and, and you can have pain and grief and your mind won't rest. Well, we've got to learn to shut the mind down. So you've got to stop the mind from stewing in the pressure cooker of life and learn the art of shutting down the mind at the end of each day. Uh, we said in the last session, we talked about this idea how, how Jesus himself taught Make up your mind not to worry. There's a, there's a cognitive decision to not focus on the issues that worry us that can really help us. Uh, if we learn how to leave the work-related issues at work and we learn how to relax the mind. Uh, I say this, you know, do something mindless. Uh, play a game, watch TV, watch a movie, uh, read a book for pleasure. Listen to some mu music. Just do some things that chill you out and just allow 
that pressure of the mind to just, just be released. Okay, the third valve that we've got to look at, that we've got to have in our life, is the emotional valve. Very important valve, the emotional valve. Uh, I think we've got to learn to embrace our emotions, learn how to get an emotional release. Do some things that move you emotionally. Watch a movie that pushes your buttons. Uh, listen to some music that touches your soul and uh, moves you to compassion. Read things that uh, take you down the road of compassion for other people. Have a conversation with someone who enrages you. It's great to have uh, different points of view. There's nothing wrong with it. All of these things can be great releases of pressure in our life. And we've got to have an emotional belt. We've got to learn to make sure that we can't just be emotionless all the time, we turn into robots. Um, it's, it's important to not have our emotions ruling our life and that we live just by emotion because then life just goes like this and we're, you know, if you're ever in a position where uh, anyone's gonna be relating to you or trusting you, if your life just goes like this all the time, people feel like they can't follow you or trust you. But, Really important that we have still have the emotional valve and we let that emotional valve be released. So there was the physical valve, the uh, psychological valve, the emotional valve, and finally, of course, the spiritual valve. Number four, the spiritual valve. And it's really, really important to investigate this uh, idea of connection with God. And uh, no matter how you do that, you've got to find a way of connecting in. There's something that happens with spiritual release. It's just as powerful as all these other ones uh, that we've talked about. And just as pragmatic and just as uh, practical in, in the outcomes of it. Um, Peter McHugh in his book, The Creative Force of Frustration, said, Personal choice is the key to all continual improvement. And I think it's up to us to have some sort of personal choice to make sure that we keep improving in life. And we've got to have that choice to be able to move from uh, our understanding of what we think, uh, you know, the spiritual valve is about. Um, some people say to me, well, you, you know, this whole spiritual thing, I'm not into it. You know, those other things, I can take that. But this spiritual thing, it, it doesn't do it for me. And uh, and I say to them, well, look, you know, you, you might not yet just have the understanding. Uh, and I quite often will draw like a circle. And I'll say, this circle represents all the knowledge that exists about God in the world. How much do you think that we really know? And uh, most people will say, well, you know, a dot. And, uh, and, and I'd say, well, you know, if that's true, then let's open ourselves to the possibility of what exists outside the, the dot of what we currently understand. And that's what I'd encourage you to do, open yourself up to possibility so you can get that spiritual release, get that connection with God happening. The cool thing is, you know, Paul wrote to his protege, Timothy, he, he said there's one God and one mediator between God and man, and that's the, uh, that's the man Christ Jesus. And, uh, and then... Another writer says that Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. And so, you know, I want to open you, I encourage you to open yourself up to those possibilities. That there's a lifestyle of promise out there for you. And uh, let's not just be people uh, that are constantly uh, talking, but let's be open to other possibilities. Um, that movie I was talking about earlier uh, with Buddy Rydell. Uh, Jack, Jack Nicholson playing the part of Dr. Buddy Rydell. He says, uh, the angry man opens his mouth and, and shuts his eyes. Well, let's not just be the people that open our mouth, but let's be people that open our hearts to the possibility of what God might have for us. And uh, so before uh, the, the pressure cooker of life takes its toll on us and the pressure builds up and we explode, let's make sure we're operating in the physical valve the psychological valve, the emotional valve, and opening ourselves up to the spiritual valve of life. Have a great time talking now with your facilitator. You're going to spend some time with you uh, just continuing on this narrative and this idea of making sure that uh, we've managed that tension between pressure and stress. And uh, they'll take you through these four uh, valves and let's talk them through. Let's talk through the ideas of them and be part of the narrative of the ongoing outcomes in our world and in our life. We'll see you again next time for the next part of Stress Busters, uh, this life renovation course.